Um, last year, um, Fanographics came out with the complete creep packs, which is collecting the major works, the entire works of Guido Creepax, the Italian artist and writer. Volume 1 had some Valentina stories. He's well known for Valentina. Dracula and Frankenstein. Uh, Frankenstein being one of the last works he did before he passed away. It was a beautiful volume that Panographics came out with. So since then I've been looking forward to volume 2. It's going to be a projected 10 volume work. And so I now have volume 2 which came out this month. And uh, here we go. It's Creep Packs, the Complete Creep Packs, the Time Eater, and other stories. It's over 400 pages. Like Volume 1, it's quite heavy. And like Volume 1, it's quite beautiful. The cover itself, the indentions, you can feel them. And then here it becomes very smooth and silky like. It's almost like its character, Valentina, who is very sensual and erotic. Uh, when I was younger, I, I discovered her in the pages of Heavy Metal. I was buying the magazine at a newsstand where I could find creepy and eerie and other war and magazine publications. It was being sold to me because it was on the rack and the clerk didn't know what he was selling to me. I... For Many months, I would go up and buy it, and then, then one day it was no longer at the rack. And when I went to the counter, I saw it. It was with the adult magazines behind the counter. And when I asked the clerk if I could buy it, he just looked at me. Like, you can't buy this. You're a kid. Even though I tried to tell him it, it should have been with the others, about in the... With, with, with the Warren magazine publications, he just he just stared at me like, "What's wrong with you?" Of course, in those ma in magazine, I discovered Richard Corbin and Mobius and Libertore and of course Creepax. And of course, as as a kid uh, and as as a male, Richard Corbin's very provocative artwork and very primitive and very instinctual, you know, one was certainly attracted to it. But it was Creepax and a story in one of those heavy metal magazines about a Valentina who is naked and she encounters an astronaut. And nothing sexual happens in this story, but there was the mystery of it and this conversation they were having. And it ends with her um, going home and there's a baby in a crib. And I said, what is this? I mean, even as a kid, I was just entranced by this. And even before I knew, understood the word um, erotic or the word sensual, it was there in Creepax. So, um, without further <laughs> introduction to this, uh, let me show you this remarkable, beautiful volume by Fanographics, The Complete Creepax, The Time Eater and Other Stories, Volume 2. As you can see, it's about it's the same size as Volume One, as beautiful. Now, side by side, if you decide to order these this volume, make sure you email the seller and let them know to pack it well, because these are very heavy books, and if they don't package it well, it's going to be damaged, guaranteed. I emailed my seller just to make sure it would be fine. And here we go. Here's what you get. Just bear with me here. It's over 400 pages. Most of the stories are Valentina stories. Prologue to the Force of Gravity, The Force of Gravity, Valentina and Boots, Mariana and the Country, The Time Eater, Reflection. Reflection I've done a video for, 
and it was one of the earliest stories I read in Heavy Metal Magazine. The Pirate Spaceship is interesting because it's a story that I don't think even Valentina appears in, but it's a story she's reading to her son. And then in Valentina the Pirate, it's Valentina's imagination taking over. Belinda is a character that Prepax created, and in, in, there's an interview here with him, and he says that it's his favorite character, which surprised me. I always thought it was Valentina. So there's an interview with him, and there's notes and essays and a publication history. There's Valentina, Arnaud, one of her lovers, her son, and um, Philip Rembrandt, her true lover, and the father of, her, of their son. And he's also a superhero named Neutron, which when Creepax started out um, doing comic strips, Rembrandt, uh, Neutron, with his hero and his girlfriend was a photographer named Isabella, I mean, was Valentina. But Valentina just captivated the imagination of Prepax, and she took over, and Rembrandt became a supporting character. The introduction is by Manuel Espiritu Santo, who did the introduction to the volume one, and has a lot to do with this book. It's a wonderful introduction. He put a lot of work into this, and it's quite admirable. Here you have covers from science fiction magazines that Creed Packs Illustrated, at least the covers, Galaxy. Prologue to the Force of Gravity. And just look at this. If anything, Creed Packs understood surrealism. He understood what it meant and how to apply it. This story, this introduction, this prologue, has Valentina at an insane asylum. She is, she doesn't know why she's there. But as you can see here, this is not what's actually happening at the place. But it's Valentina's unconscious, which Creepax is something he's able to put on the page in a way that I, I just can't see any other artist doing. I think if Creepax ever just, if he was alive and if he could do a DC or Marvel character, he would do wonders to. Harley Quinn. Absolute wonders. Now, we learn she is here on the couch table of a psychiatrist. And that's how we learn she's in the psychiatric ward. This is this continues the storyline which began in Volume 1 of uh, the Complete Works. And where this takes place right after Valentina encounters a subterranean. So now we get to the story, Force of Gravity. You see this model at the beach, and you see this looks like a shell of some kind, but it's not. It's a robotic creature, an alien robotic creature, which is admiring her body. But not just admiring it. He is going to, it is going to take its shape. And that's going to be a, uh, a, a plot line throughout these stories. Where you have this alien creature taking the form of anything it wants, including this model. And it's going to affect Valentina's life. Now here's Valentina at the psychiatric ward, wanting to be released. Uh, and the way Valentina interprets the, um, the internment, or the, it's more like a, an imprisonment, Valentina's parents were Russian and and um and Jewish. So um in some of the other Kripak stories you have her having memories of on, of being on the train and being interrogated by the Nazis, her and her family when she was when she was a little girl. So this is just again her imagination. Now again, this uh, robotic creature is going to be prevalent throughout the story. At one point, it's going to take the form of a cat. And, um, and even at one point, even is a robot. Most of these stories were done in the 70s, early 70s. 
some I think in the mid in the early late sixties. But one cannot just I mean you could just stare at this, this artwork for just the longest of time. At least I can. And Kripak's imagination was just first rate. He was a first rate storyteller and artist. He studied engineering and architecture when he was younger, but comics just drew him. He enjoyed the Phantom in particular. He also liked uh, the Flash Gordon strips and Mandrake. He's also a cinema buff. He, he watched a lot of European films. Move on ahead here. I can show you something and compare this to some other volumes. From uh, let's see, this will give you an idea of how what Creepax has done. Oh, one more thing. Another influence on Creepax was the creator of Barbarella. And as you can see here, this story here is an homage to a Barbarella story. And here you have Barbarella. And there's Valentina. And she says, she was born before me. And this reflection, I've done a video for this. One of the earliest stories I did, uh, I mean, I read when I was, when I was little. Of Valentina encountering an astronaut in her garden. He just lands there. See that again? I when I was little, I saw this, and as a kid, and I said, "What is this?" You see this beautiful woman, and there's her son, and he's crying. I mean, this was not your typical comic book at the time. I mean, this was not a typical American comic, and I was just started to discover some of those American comics, and it as good as they are, I mean, this, you would not see this in an American book. This is the Spirit Spaceship. And this is a story that, as we learned by the end, it's a story that she's reading to her son. And it's just a basic science fiction story with the tribute to uh, Flash Gordon. And the story ends. And now we get Valentina. Valentina the Pirate. Now I want to show you something here. Here you have an interview with Valentina. <laughs> so, and she's being discussed about her personal life, her influences, uh, stuff she reads, and also about her creator, Guido Crepax. Now look at the size of this. You see that? Now as you can see, let's see, I, I have the Italian editions of this book, all 18 volumes. And first is the size of this, this is the volume 18. Hopefully this will stay right here. I'm going to put it down, I'm going to stay. Let me find the equivalent of this page. Here we go. I mean, this is very nice, don't get me wrong. This is very nice. See that there? But now we get to this. Look at that. Granted, this is an Italian. If you don't read English, it's going to be a problem if you get this book here. But, but this, you get an idea of how just 
stunning this book is. Now that I've shown you that, now here's an Italian version of the pirate story. Okay, much smaller. See that? Oops, sorry. Beautiful book. I mean, beautiful artwork, but compared to this, my goodness. And one more. Um, these are have been collected into four volumes. This is, uh, I think this is volume four. I don't think there's a volume five yet, but this is from Spain. And these came out a few years ago. Beautiful books. They have the same stories as you collected here in Volume 1. I think these are in Volume 1. But again, look at the size of this. I mean, you, just, um, you just can't beat this. So, this is where we are. And here's... Here they're asking about uh, what... Um, Creepax likes the books that he likes, and he's adapted like a story of O, Emmanuel, Justine by the Marquis de Sade. And they ask about the films that he likes, or that she likes, and it doesn't show you here what the film she likes. Battleship Dumpkin, Ivan the Terrible, Wild Strawberries by Bergman, Seven Samurai, Eight and a Half by Fellini. I'm surprised you didn't mention Buñuel. Buñuel does appear as a reference in some of the other stories by Valentina. The new wave film from the 60s had a strong influence on these uh, uh, on Creepax. Either acknowledged or not acknowledged, but they're certainly a part of it. As was jazz. Jazz was extremely important. That absolutely beautiful. Now the Belinda stories. I'm not familiar with Belinda, but it surprised me uh, in the interview, which was done at the end of his life. I think it was in the interview or in one of the comments in the back that Belinda was his favorite character. I would have thought it was Valentina, but apparently it was this Belinda character. He said he had more freedom in her with her than he did with Valentina. Let's see. Now this is the end of the book where you have uh, the Screepex, his interview. He studied to be an engineer and an architect, and he, that's what he did initially. And but he started doing advertisements, and he eventually started doing comics. Story notes. Here you have something. So if you're not familiar with Valentina, you're reluctant to get this book. Don't worry, you can get the book. Here it gives you, there's a synopsis of the stories and it gives you background to it. So if you're new to Creepax or Valentina, um, don't be afraid of jumping in. These are really good introductions to the stories. They're just really well done. Valentina and her astronaut. More uh, notes. The people who did some of the essays. One of them is Tim Pilcher. And I want to say that Pilcher... It says he wrote a two-volume graphic history of erotic comics, which I, I, I know I have a two-volume work of erotic comics, and it may be him. Um... Others are Marco Lucchetti, Alvaro Ponce, Sarah Horrocks, 
Manuel Espiritu Santo, who did the introduction, and Christy Valenti. So this is out right now. If um, Amazon has the cheapest ones, the I think the average price is between forty and fifty dollars. It may go down in price. I can I know it'll probably go down in price in the coming months. And I think I was mistaken. I think it came out in January, not February. But if um, it's certainly worth the price, it's just a a stunning book remarkable stories that would just feed the imagination um, and I'm just hoping that Prepax will get a, just a larger uh, following in the United States as he deserves he's quite unique like any great artist like Jack Kirby uh, Mobius um, Steve Ditko um, he does something that few have been able to accomplish. He's been able just to just create something that is just so remarkable that um, every time you look at it, it's like looking at it for the first time. Absolute beauty. Like a beautiful woman. Eternal and forever. Thank you for viewing.